Well, we're on our way over to Steve's. Mm -hmm. Steve has built a new village. Oh, that, yes. That's not what the show's about. No. No. We're actually going over there to watch Don run around his newest brass creation. Oh. I think he's bringing a couple of the old yes. ones along with him, too. Right. Don built the coolest engines. His I've new one is a like K28, it. a Rio Grande K28. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. They're just beautiful, beautiful engines. But he insists on putting soundtracks and sound units in them, the tsunami sound units that are made in Durango, Colorado. Last week while we were in Durango, we went over and we looked at their factory on how they make these things and so on. So we're going to do both. We're going to see Don's new engine running around with its tsunami sound unit, uh -huh. and then we're going to be over at the factory seeing how they build right. tsunami sound units in Durango, Colorado. So this is all cool and fun. Well, Don's newest creation utilizes a Soundtracks digital command control system with sound. A command control system gives the operator total control of their locomotive while everybody else has control of their locomotive as well, all on the same track, all at the same time, and each locomotive able to produce its own sounds. The operator also has control of the lights, the whistle, the bell, and a lot of other sounds. The sounds are digital samples pulled off of real locomotives and then programmed into the unit. Now the nifty little train that Don is putting on the track right now is a ready-to-run Bachmann unit from the Bachmann Spectrum line. These come with Tsunami boards already installed. They are also delivered in a 30-inch gauge. Don prefers 36-inch gauge, so he just tears them apart and re-gauges them. No mean feat. Now, as you can see and plainly here, a diesel unit is also available. Tsunami units are available for just about every kind of locomotive. Now, of course, there are a lot of companies making sound units, but our preference is the Tsunami units from Soundtracks. I think they just sound better. So the whole process starts here. Recorded sounds are brought into Pro Tools and then edited into digital samples to be used in the sound units. The actual locomotives are recorded in the field, gathering up all the different sounds that these locomotives make so that the sound can be correct in any given situation. The end result being that as you work the controls of your model engine, it should sound as close as humanly possible to the original engine as it goes through all of the various cycles, valves opening and closing, linkages moving, and all of that sort of thing. Now here's how the little units are created. This is a blank circuit board. It's actually a whole bunch of sound units all on one blank board. They're run through this machine, which is sort of a silk screening machine, that puts solder paste on one side of the board, which will ultimately hold the connections. There are different kinds of masks that can be loaded into the machine for each kind of board. Then the boards are moved over to this machine. It's called a pick and place machine. And what it does is it places the little microscopic components onto the board. The components are shipped on film, old style Super 8 and even 16 millimeter film. How weird is that? And then these little robotic tools are used to grab the components off the film and place them onto the circuit board. They have two of these units. Each one can place eight components. Thank you. 
After eight components are placed by the first machine, then the board is placed into the second machine and eight more components are added. Then the boards travel through this tunnel, it's actually an oven, and it melts that solder paste that was silk screened on earlier, soldering the components to the boards. The solder joints are created and they're all cured, if you will, soldered into place. So then we're going to test the components and the circuits and make sure that everything's soldered well in here. have basically a bed of nails that'll help us support this okay. guy so it's pretty flexible <laughs> until we enable that and now we're, we're pretty solid. So we've got four of these flying probes. They can make four electrical tests in one second whether it be capacitance, resistance, or, or just continuity. It's checking all those. So this board, as you can see, it's not very populated, so that's why it's just flying through these. Some of the boards are a lot more complicated and have more components, and so they go through the pick-and-place machines several times. Then all of the boards come over here, and they're cut into the individual pieces, shrink-wrapped, put in plastic bags, and shipped out to your local hobby shop where Don can buy them and install them into his latest K-28. Now Don being Don, he can't seem to avoid experimenting and trying oddball motor combinations and whatnot, and then he blows the unit up, so it comes back over here to soundtracks to be repaired by the technicians. Now what you see here is the new Soundtracks building. It's pretty much right across the street from the old Soundtracks building, but they've outgrown that, and so they're moving the whole deal over here. Check out the new manufacturing floor. All of those machines will be placed in here, and as you can see, they have a lot of room for expansion. And the sound editing and engineering spaces, as well as the offices, are upstairs. Well, that is really oh, wow. cool. What that a place. something else. The, the factory that they're using now is just amazing, but wow. the new place. It's just state of the art. Now, I worked in an electronics plant, you know, 35, almost 40 years ago, and that was state of the art then. This just my mind. It's amazing. It's amazing. It's just amazing. And I'm really looking forward. While we were there, I picked up a tsunami unit. They've got a new one for large scale, mm -hmm. and we have a lot of large scale. So I'm going to shove it, I think, in the K27 mm -hmm. or the C19. You might want to get two. Well, there's the thing. Just buy another one well, and that's do right. both. You have to have sound. I mean, gotta have sound. Well, these days, if it if it isn't command control with sound, it's called a display model. You right. just don't run it if it's, well, it's not boring. set up right. It's boring. It's boring. And after seeing Don's engines and the way they're working and sounding right. and everything, it's like, well, okay. They do everything. Time to join the 21st century and mm -hmm. stick these units. So we bought a, a tsunami unit for an engine. We're going to buy another one. Right. We're also going to build an HON3 layout mm -hmm. down in the basement because we've been talking about that. Oh, we right. were debating to do N scale or whatever. Mm -hmm. But we're going to get back into HON3. I used to do HON3 and I gave it up because it doesn't work. It didn't work. didn't work back then. These days it works fine and that's because these same guys, the Soundtracks guys, make their whole line right. of HON3 models all ready to go, the Blackstone models. Mm -hmm. The way this works is you buy it, you take it out of the box, you set it on the track, then you push go. That's it. That's it. And it works brilliantly. The sound is there. The command control is there. It doesn't fall off the track. It runs smoothly. My kind of railroad. It's just simple. Yeah. Used to be, too, that I couldn't see to build the darn thing. Well, yeah, in this well, case, you pull it out of the box. You set it on. You don't need yeah. to see what you're doing. You just well, need to be able to push the just go button. Push the go button and away you and go. Away you go. Right. And, uh, this is going to be. So we're going to build an HON3 lab. Now both of these things, the installation of the sound system and the building of the railroad, 
of course, is going to be here on the show right. with Don helping us getting the sound system in because I don't understand that stuff. I'm completely intimidated and confused by it, having right. never done it. But Don does it in his sleep, so right. he's going to guide us through the, the rough spots there as we go forward. And hopefully then it will all become clear. <coughs> well, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, do subscribe right. to the channel. The blue button will be popping in in just a moment right down here, and that will subscribe you to the channel. If you're already subscribed, that will take you over there. And while you're there, click on Guy's Hobby Shop because that's the new website. And over there, there's a link to ToyManTelevision.com, GuysHobbyShop.com. And it all links together, and there's even a lovely link to the YouTube channel. Right. So you can fish around and do all of these things. And it all starts by clicking the blue button that says subscribe. Well, we're not sure how you found this movie on the Internet. We hope you didn't find it boring. We will see you here again in one week with some more massive screwing around. Bye-bye.